to worship this morning. It is gift to be alive, is it not? You can say yes. It is. Um, this is a delightful Sunday for the likes of me and perhaps others as well. Um, usually we go right from Thanksgiving into Advent, which is the season of preparing for the birth of Jesus. But this year, because Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday, our last Sunday of Advent is Christmas Eve morning. And so this Sunday, we get to just revel in being thankful. How's that for a thing? Uh, so um, that's what I'm thankful for on this day. I'm delighted that you're here and uh, that we get to praise God together. We will have an opportunity as you exit the church to buy just about anything you need, including lefsa or other things. Um, you didn't know you needed lefsa, but you do. And uh, a chance to sign up for a potluck supper that we will, you'll hear more about uh, during the sermon, but it's a great chance to uh, share the most sacred of meals, which is the church potluck on December 10th. So uh, be thinking about what you want to bring, and even if you bring nothing, we want you here, and uh, we want this chance to celebrate together. So thank you for being here this morning. Would you rise as you're able, and let's lean into singing our gratitude. <laughs> be seated. Will you pray with me, please? God, you are majestic and good, powerful and mysterious. Thank you for bright sunlight, pale frost, the deep calming dark of early sunsets and restful quiet. We need this back and forth of white lights and black night. We need energy and invigoration and rest and peace, long days and long nights. Thank you for balance and moments, even if they are just the briefest of moments of clarity and peace. We remember this week to be thankful, 
thankful in times of challenge and growth, thankful in times of ease and relaxation, thankful for time with friends and family, thankful for times to celebrate abundance. We're thankful to be entering in this week to a season where everyone sings and hopes and prays for peace on earth, goodwill to men. We pray we might be one mind and one heart and one body this season. We're thankful, God, that your son Jesus taught us to be one with each other. So help us to be thankful in all moments. Amen. Adults can come up too. Anyone who thinks young. Oh, there they come. A lot of you probably had too much turkey and are still trying to work it off. Oh, come on up. Well, here we go. Well, as everyone's coming, what holiday did we just have? What big thing did we just have? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So what do some of you do on Thanksgiving? Grandma and Grandpa. Anyone else? What some of you do? that came. So all of you had lots of fun with cousins. And maybe just grandma and grandpa or aunts and uncles, friends. We have all these different people together. And we all, did you eat lots? How many ate lots? How many ate too much? So when you think about Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving has a lot to do with being thankful. And I bet a lot of you have things that you're thankful for. Right now, I'm going to say I'm thankful for this beautiful sun and this great weather. What are some of the rest of you thankful for? Church. My family has beds in my home. Wonderful. those things. Anybody thankful for food? I love food. Sometimes I have too much food. But do you think that there are kids around here that don't have enough food? Yeah. We do have kids around here that don't have enough food, don't they? And one of the things, too, we have so much. We ha- None of you went hungry on Thursday, did you? None of you. You had your pie, you had your turkey and your dressing and all that kind of good thing. But some kids didn't. But we'd like to make, be thankful for what we have. And a way that we can be thankful is to help other people. And as we said, not every kid has enough to eat. Now, some of you come, who, who all comes on Wednesday nights here? Some of you come on Wednesday nights. What do we do on Wednesday nights besides eat ourselves? We bring things to other people that want to eat hot dishes. Right. We bring hot dishes and all kinds of food for other people. But what else do we do? When some of you come in and we're going to choir, what are some things that some of you will say, oh, I want to do that? And Ted, you're one of the best ones. What do you like to do when you come in before you're going to choir? You're not going to tell me? We're often silent. We're both by often. <laughs> well, one of the things that we do, we participate in a program called Food for Friends. And we pack backpacks to take to kids that don't have enough to eat, don't we? So a lot of you, when you come in on Wednesday nights before you go to choir and before you eat, 
you come and you help the Pack Backpack. And this is a way of giving to others and helping others. I brought some of the food that we have for um, on Wednesday nights. I'm going to give some of it to you, and we're going to pack a backpack so that we can take it. We've got peanut butter. We have cereal. We have some canned foods. We have some applesauce. We give them some milk. All kinds of different things. But giving and helping other people makes us feel good, too. When we're helping someone else, it makes us feel so much better because we're giving of ourselves. Do you want to put some in, too? Here, you can put some peanut butter in there. I don't, oh, I missed some over here. So what we do, we have our backpack. Each child, we fill a little bag for them, don't we? And this is one of some of the kids' favorite activities. Then we go and we take them, and then we put them in a backpack. We have families that go out and pick up the food. Sure. So you're, we're going to fill that backpack, that little bag, and that will be enough food for one kid for the weekend. So we put it in a backpack, and another family, somebody, then takes it over to the school. So thank you, thank you, and for helping on Wednesday nights. And let's take a little prayer and be thankful for all that we have. Dear God, thank you for the sunny skies, for the beautiful weather, and for all the food and the things that we have, and also for the opportunities and the ways that we can help other people. Amen. Now, let's all go to principal. So. While these kids are running off to Sunday school, if you'd turn with me to page 821 in your Red United Methodist hymnal, we're going to be reading responsively Psalm 100. So turn to eight, 821 in your Red hymnal. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord who made us is God. We are the Lord's. We are the people of God. The sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. For the Lord is good.
I share with you on this morning of giving thanks the power of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. I'm reading from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message. What Paul wants to underscore for his listeners is that living in the way of Jesus means that we are the presence of Jesus wherever it is we find ourselves. So just as the youth were singing about going ye into all the world, you do. Every place you find yourself, you are testifying to, to the gospel of Jesus Christ and your willingness to live into that gospel vision. So let's hear what Paul has to say. When I heard of the solid trust that you have in the master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I could not stop thanking God for you every time I prayed. I would think of you and give thanks, but I do more than thank. I ask, I ask the God of our master Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing Jesus personally. Your eyes focused and clear so that you can see what Jesus is calling you to do and grasp, grasp the immensity of his glorious way of life that Jesus has for his followers. Oh, the utter extravagance of his work in us who trust him endless energy and boundless strength all of this energy issues from christ god raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe everything from galaxies to governments there is no name and no power exempt from the power of jesus christ and not just for the time being, but forevermore. Jesus is in charge of it all, has the final word on everything. And at the center of this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, and by which he fills everything with his presence. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. We get to sing it now.
be seated. As we enter into this time of offering this morning, I just wanted to lift up a word of thanksgiving for the way this congregation welcomed the speaker and child and youth guru, Derek Peterson, last week. It's because of your support in this church and your offering that we can have amazing speakers from all over the world teach us about what it is to grow our children and youth to be strong and resilient. And in all the ways we do adult education and small groups in this place, people's lives are being changed every single week. So let us consider the ways that we learn with one another as we take this time to share offering. we are so grateful and because we are grateful we surrender all that we've been given because we know it will become a part of something bigger than us so take all that we have all that we are and use these gifts to transform the world around us and so we pray together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. So it is my hope that your Thanksgiving was a feasty one. Don't you think that should be a word, feasty? It is now. By that, I mean that I hope that you are able during this time of Thanksgiving to savor all of the blessings in your life. I hope that you were able to give over for just even a fracture of a second some of the fretting that is sometimes constant companion for some of us. And I pray that you were able to lay over your heart one of the best antidotes to despair there is in life, and that is the practice of gratitude. Practicing thankfulness saves lives. You know the truth of that. So what I want to do this morning is share with you some of the gratitudes uh, that I have encountered over the last week or so, and also a practice for cultivating mindfulness in order that we might become more, more thankful people. Because the world needs thankful people. One of my gratitudes is this. On Tuesday night here in your sanctuary, we named gratitude together with people from the Baha'i tradition, Church of Latter-day Saints, Catholics, Muslims, Jews, Presbyterian USA, Evangelical Lutherans, United Methodists, Mennonites, and Unitarian Universalist communities. We were all gathered together in this place, and the evening was feasty. It was a delicious serving up of holy scriptures and prayers, and we premiered a world premiere of a piece written by the composer Victor Zupank, who writes for the Guthrie Theater and the Children's Theater. We premiered it right here in your sanctuary. It was thrilling. Um, and the evening was topped off by an abundance of pie. That was a good thing. And as I shared that night, and you can see how old I really am inside of myself, we each got to put our own whipped cream on our pie with a little squirty thing. Jan Martin and her crew offered up amazing hospitality. My husband Cooper discovered his ushering skills are strong. And David Friddle and the other musicians who were here on Tuesday night blessed us beyond the telling. So we were doing what Psalm 100 calls us to do making a joyful noise in gratitude to our God. So I went home so full of gratitude for this church. Thanksgiving Day for me was food and children and their partners and three male dogs in our house. So did you know that when you have that many male dogs in your house, they feel compelled to mark their territory inside the house? Did you know this? This happened in our house. And the joy of it all, the chaos of marking dogs and conversation <laughs> and the Thanksgiving feast, there was such a steady beat of gratitude in my heart as we laughed. And really, their, their parents, the dog moms and dads, were mortified. So that made it all okay. A large reason that hums underneath all of the other kinds of givings of thanks is uh, that we get to live the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. We're an equipping station. We're a place where we learn faith practices in order that we can do something meaningful with our lives and in this world God gives us to tend. So I want to share with you one of the most powerful teachings Jesus has given us because it is so very clear 
about what it means to love the Lord our God with all our heart and our mind and our soul and our creativity and our passion and our witness. This way of loving is a way of living thanks. So I read to you from the book of Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory at the end times, and all of the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all of the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as shepherds separate the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the very world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. And you welcomed me. I was naked. And you gave me clothing. I was sick. And you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me there. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? And when was it that we gave you something to clothe yourself with? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You who are accursed, depart from me to the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't welcome me. Naked, and you didn't give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and didn't take care of you? And then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. May God add a blessing to the reading of these so very challenging and clear words. So I was not here last Sunday. I was in California with my oldest daughter and with her husband. We went on a whale watching tour and we saw blue whales, I'm just saying. And we shared life together. I got to see how it is they live day by day. And really, importantly to me, was that I had a chance to begin to digest the worship service and the witness that we shared together on November 12th. As we dedicated our pledges, I hope you still have that picture of that parade in your mind. I certainly do for the program year to come, for the year 2018, and our pledges for the Transform campaign. We are still collecting pledges, so I'm not going to share with you today the total that has been pledged thus far. But I do want to tell you that clearly people have been praying. The prayer that we have asked them to pray, us all to pray, God, what do you want to do through me? And so what I can say without naming numbers on this day is that clearly people
people have been saying to God and to themselves, what is it I can do in this world? God has given me so much to be in ministry with. We'll celebrate the naming of the numbers on the 10th of December, and then we're going to adjourn for the Holy Potluck. And hopefully, in good United Methodist style, we'll have many jello salads. Yes? What's clear to me in these initial weeks following the dedication of those pledges is that God clearly wants to do a lot through us. And you feel it, too. God clearly knows that we seek to be the body of Christ and that we want to share through this congregation love and mercy, especially with the needy. And you know what? I'm needy of grace and forgiveness, and I'm needy of many things. And there are many who are needy for other things around us all the time. Whatsoever we do to the least of these, Jesus says, we do to Jesus Christ, right? That's the radical nature of what it means to be Jesus followers, is that we commit to seeing the holiest of the holy in each other. That's powerful work, especially in diverse community. I want to share on this day of sharing emails, what a, or uh, gratitude, what a difference it makes that this church exists. I got an email recently from a woman who's living in Malawi for a time. Christy Sessions is someone who has worked with Katie. She's a, a young adult who's pursuing a medical career through Mayo, and she's in Malawi for a time uh, for an inner uh, inner, uh, what do you call it, not interfaith, but you know what I mean, intercultural experience. And here's what she wrote recently about you, church. She said, I just wanted to send a quick note from Malawi to say thank you. The longer I am away from the States, the more I realize that I miss the spaces that I call home. For me, Christ United Methodist Church is a critical piece that has made Rochester home for me. I love getting messages from the church, getting newsletters and Bible study invites. And I love watching from afar as amazing things happen in the community. You speak truth from the pulpit that is sometimes messy. It's often hard to hear. And it's vitally important. While I miss the place that I call home, it is gift to stand aside and observe the wonderful works taking place through the church. I pray that you will continue to find sources of encouragement and joy as you work toward big goals. Isn't she echoing exactly what the, what the Apostle Paul was saying to the uh, Ephesus church? She goes on to say, we welcome people in our church here in Malawi with the word tuklandalini, and I said it wrong, I'm sure, which literally means you are welcome. It's a word that invites people into spaces in an intimate and in a genuine way. You embody this word each week, and you are inviting old and young to be in a community that they can call home. Thank you. All my best, Christy. From across the world, brothers and sisters, people are singing gratitude for your discipleship. The ways that we love one another in the way that Jesus has taught matters so greatly. The ways we see Christ and the holy in one another matters so great, greatly. So what I want to give myself and each of us is a practice in order that we might continue to cultivate a mindful practice of gratitude. I don't know how many of you listen to Krista Tippett's show on being... It is fabulous. On Being is the name of the show. If you Google it, 
it'll flip you right to that page. There, she's just a stunning interviewer of really interesting people who are living their faith in powerful ways. She recently interviewed a man by the name of Greg Boyle. He is a Catholic priest who runs a number of ministries and small businesses for gang members in Los Angeles. You know that people who join gangs are broken and they're looking for a sense of belonging, right? That's part of what Derek was teaching us, is that we are meant to be a place where youth and children and adults find belonging because we all are desperate for a sense of being known and seen and heard, aren't we? So Father Greg Boyle runs a number of these ministries and he seeks to create a place where, using Christie's words, young and old can find a community that they call home. So on her recent show, Krista Tippett asked Father Boyd how it is he goes about navigating the challenges of his call and the way that he is engaged in the way of Jesus Christ in the world. And I share it with you because the work of offering compassion and attention is really hard work. It's hard work enough in our marriages, right? And with our kids, how many of you thought, all right, two days with my family is enough compassion for a while, right? Or enough attention for a while. But what Father Boyd says is this, he says that whenever the desert fathers and mothers would get absolutely despondent and they didn't know how they were going to put one foot in front of the next, they had this mantra. A mantra is a phrase that you repeat over and over so that it becomes part of your very heartbeat. And the mantra that these desert fathers and mothers repeated was not the word God, and it was not the word Jesus. The word that they repeated over and over is the word today. And that's sort of the key, Father Boyd says. There's a play off Broadway right now called Now Here, H-E-R-E, -E, here, not this kind of here, but here, now hear this. And that's kind of become my mantra. I'm big on mantra, he's, mantras, he says. So now when I'm walking or before a kid comes into my office, I always say, now hear this. So that I will be present and right there with the person right in front of me. So Jesus calls us to see each person in front of this, of us, to see their beauty and their holiness and their strength and their need, whether it's cold food or cold water or food or clothing or companionship or community or a place to share bad jokes or a place to belong and grow and thrive or support or care or compassion or clothing or Saturday noon meals. Now, hear this. May we live this powerful intention in the sacred temple that is our very soul. And may we live this mindfulness in community with all of God's creation on this beautiful earth we've been given to steward now. Here. This.
this world here, now. Be present to all that God has blessed you with and the power God gives you to pay attention. Go in the name and the power and the joy of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you.